Hi, I'm Amy from Our Amiable Farmhouse, and today's tutorial is all about springtime. Well, springtime cake. This year, my tween daughter wanted a crepe cake for her birthday cake. She saw it on Pinterest, and I said, hey, it's spring, so why not lemon meringue? Do you like lemon meringue? And she was like, yeah. My fresh farmhouse lemon meringue sourdough crepe cake. Hi, I'm Amy from Our Amiable Farmhouse. So glad you could join me today. Ah, springtime. It's one of my favorite times of the year, although I honestly really like all the seasons of the year. I just like the change. The newness that it brings. Uh, winter brings kind of like solitude. Bundling up with scarves and blankets and wood stoves. Um, and then there's spring, and that's the season that we are embarking upon right now. There's sunshine and greenery, and all the blooms are coming out. It's just so beautiful. And one of my favorite things about spring is all things lemon. Now, I don't know why, because lemons do not produce in the spring, but I think it's that sunshiny yellow color that just makes me happy, and I love lemon flavor. Now, over the years, I have had a blast creating different birthday cakes for my four girls. Yes, I have four daughters. You can feel sorry for my husband now. <laughs> He's a trooper. He's done great. <laughs> over the years, I have done princess cakes, castle cakes, basketball cakes. Um, I, I can't even think of all the different cakes that I've done over the years. Probably one of my favorite, just because it was a fun to create, was a frozen themed cake. Um, the trees were made out of marshmallow fluff. Uh, that, was, that was really fun to make. And the girls flipped. They thought it was the best cake ever. And I had little figurines of Elsa and Anna and Olaf, uh, Sven and what's his name? Sven. <laughs> no, the other guy, Sven. No. <laughs> um, Christoph, that's his name. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Anyways, uh, I did a Moana cake and the sides of the cake were done to look like waves. And it was an ombre where it went from the darker blue around the bottom edge of the cake up into a lighter blue and then into the white, like the white cap foam of the, the top of the wave. I've done like a Cinderella cake. I've done a Charlie Brown. Um, a lot of cakes. And it takes a lot of frosting, a lot of food coloring, a lot of unhealthy ingredients. In fact, one cake for one of my daughters, she just didn't, she was in that in-between stage of tween and teen and didn't really have any kind of theme that she could think of that she really wanted. Like she was beyond the Disney thing. She was still a little too young for sophisticated roses and ribbons and you know, an adult looking cake. So um, I decided to just decorate it with all her favorite candies in the entire world. And so it had like Kit Kats on the outer edge of the cake and it had sour gummy bears and sour gummy worms. Um, oh, those little pillow mints. Um, there was like seven or eight different candies on this cake. It was disgusting. <laughs> but she thought it was great and they ate it. I don't know, but yoo -hoo. So because I have such a hard time remembering over the years what I've done, oh, I figured I would just, you know, interview the girls and they could tell you <laughs> what their favorites were. Hannah, what was your favorite cake? Uh, the chocolate cake fudge one. The, cho oh. the chocolate fudge cake that mm -hmm. I just made? Yeah. Oh. And okay. the unicorn one was my least favorite. So, that was back story. Yeah. Was <laughs> Last gross. year, I made a unicorn cake. Now, the unicorn looked really cute, okay, I must say. But... Looks uh, are deceiving. <laughs> with the current health issues that... Um, Hannah has epilepsy, and so um, we were on a kind of a modified keto diet, but we were trying to really 
um, follow a keto, no sugar, no grain diet. And so her cake was a keto cake, but it ended up being a little bit on the dry side. I don't know if there's probably just too much coconut flour, but um, <sighs> it wasn't that palatable, but it looked cute. Dry. And that's my motto. Gross. As long as you look good. That's all that matters, right? No, no but the, <laughs> not when it comes the sugar to cake. cake. Okay, not when it comes to the cake. The sugar cake was so good. Sarah. My favorite cake was the frozen cake that Mom made for me and Hannah, and it was like this vanilla cake, I believe, and she made this marshmallow-y fluffy stuff on top as like trees, and they were so fluffy and yummy. And Jessica. Um, my favorite cake was the chocolate cake and the butter, I love buttercream frosting, and mom makes a really good buttercream frosting when she doesn't try to steviatize it. Um, and then she put, it was like a candy cake, like, it was covered in candy, you couldn't even see the cake until you cut it, it was really good. I was 12, so it was like a dream cake. And gummy <laughs> worms, starburst on sticks. Oh yeah, starburst. And, and what were the buttermints? Gummy bears. Buttermints. And buttermints. airheads. Yes. So good. Oh, airheads. airheads. Yes. yes, there were airheads that on the cake. That was good. Mom was like, you're going to get diabetes. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't get any. I was so sad. Oh yeah, that was your keto journey right at the beginning. That was sad. So that's one thing yeah. One thing we noticed um, when uh, we were you know, first discovering that she had epilepsy and trying to figure out why she was having so many seizures. We discovered that um, refined sugars really set her seizures off. She just goes crazy. So, side note. All right, so thanks girls for your input. So anyways, <laughs> back to this year, we did a crepe cake. And so I'm gonna share that recipe with you today. It's pretty simple. You just need some crepes, lemon curd, and meringue. And then I used some lemon slices and raspberries to decorate the top. I'm going to show you how I made this fresh spring inspired farmhouse lemon meringue sourdough crepe cake. So let's get started. So as I said, you're going to need um, sourdough crepes. I shared the sourdough crepe recipe over on my blog and I will link that recipe here in the cards or here. I'm not sure which direction it'll be <laughs> but there will be a link and I'll link it in the description below too for you um, those are really simple to make it just utilizes your sourdough starter and it doesn't have to be in a domed active state it could just be in hibernation from your fridge um, if you don't want it as sour I do suggest uh, feeding it um, about four to six hours before you plan to use it and then it won't be so sour I think I used mine fresh out of the fridge and maybe we're used to the sourdough taste. I don't know, but it wasn't sour to us and it didn't seem overly sour at all. All you need is your sourdough starter, some eggs, and whip that up and throw it on the cast iron. And within 12 to 15 minutes, um, you've got a stack of crepes that you can use to build your cake. Now for the lemon curd, there's a lot of different lemon curd recipes out there. Some um, require you to strain it because the egg white might cook up and then get that undesirable white glob texture in your <laughs> lemon curd and so they have you strain it. That's just an extra step and I'm all about convenience and fast cooking times or uh, fast turnaround times less time in the kitchen so um, I adapted this recipe from Nourishing Joy and I linked her original recipe on uh, the blog as well so but I took that as um, a basic guide for the recipe that I'm going to use today. Um, you want to start heating a double boiler on the stove. Um, I don't have a double boiler so I simply just use a um, smaller pot than my mixer bowl and I fill it with some water and start it simmering and then uh, for the double boiler part I just set my simply set my mixer bowl on top and use it that way. With the paddle attachment of your electric mixer you're going to cream your butter and honey together until light and fluffy on medium speed. Then you're going to add your yolks one at a time blending well with each addition. Once those ingredients are fully incorporated, add your pinch of salt and then turn your mixer down to low speed or a mixed speed and you're going to slowly incorporate your lemon juice. 
and you're going to mix that thoroughly until um, it starts to homogenize a little bit. Now it might look a little curdled at this point and that's because of the addition of the acid or the lemon juice but that's okay because once we start to heat it up it will melt that butter and everything will incorporate nicely. At this point you're going to place your mixer bowl on top of your double boiler and you're going to heat that lemon curd slowly whisking constantly until the butter melts and the mixture is thick and coats the back of a spoon. Now you can test this by um, dipping your spoon in your lemon curd and just wiping the back of that spoon off with your finger and if a trail is left behind with your finger then you know that it's done. You want to cover your lemon curd and stick it in the fridge until it's nice and cool and as it cools it will thicken up further and then just leave it in the fridge until you're ready to assemble your cake. Now for the meringue topping, uh, you're going to use about half of the egg whites that uh, are that you separated from your egg yolks. If you use all of the egg whites, you are going to have a mountain of egg whites, which is not a bad thing, but it might look a little top heavy on your cake. So my suggestion is to use just half of them, and then with the other half, you can make an egg white scramble for breakfast in the morning, or you could uh, use it to make meringue cookies, you know, whatever. So for the meringue topping, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and using your stand mixer again, you're going to whisk all the ingredients except for the sugar on high speed until it starts to get nice and frothy. Then you begin adding your sugar one tablespoon at a time and just so that you are making sure that it, it's dissolving really well. One thing I learned about this step was uh, the reason you want to just add a tablespoon at a time and mix it up really well to get that uh, dissolving action is because otherwise if this sugar doesn't fully dissolve when you bake it it will cause these little water droplet effects and that's or I think they call it like weepy meringue um, and that's just from the undissolved sugar apparently I don't know then you just continue to whisk your meringue on high speed until stiff peaks form. Now I just took a parchment lined cookie sheet and I scooped out the meringue onto the cookie sheet and I just made a nice round circle. I kind of took my plate of um, crepes that I had already prepared, you know, guesstimated my largest size, just made a round blob of meringue that would fit on top of the cake. I used my spatula to kind of create those waves and valleys and peaks that meringue pies typically have to give it some texture. To bake that in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes or until golden brown. Cool the meringue for about 10 minutes and then you're going to try and gently remove it with a metal spatula from the uh, parchment paper and then you will put it back on the rack to continue cooling. You want it to be completely cool before you place it on top of your cake. And so while that's cooling, you can start assembling the cake. You simply take the cake platter that you want to display your lemon meringue sourdough crepe cake on. I place a crepe down first, and then I spread a medium-sized layer of lemon curd, and then I place another crepe and then I repeat with another layer of lemon curd. And I just continue to do that until I have used up the stack of crepes or gotten my cake as high as I want to have it. And once you've used up all of your crepes and your lemon curd, then you can place your meringue on the top. And this is the fun part because you can really see the cake coming together and you get to decorate the top. That's always the, the most fun part for me. I love to decorate. Although sometimes I'm not very good at it, but I just, I go with it, I fake it until I make it, and somehow it comes out great every time. <laughs> or at least the kids think so. And that's really all that matters, right? Because usually we're doing it for them. With this lemon meringue crepe cake, I used simple lemon slices and I got some fresh red raspberries and they were so beautiful together. The lemon and the red, so pretty. Arranged the lemon slices around the cake and intermingled with the raspberries and called it a day. It was so simple, probably the easiest cake I've done because I didn't have to make a buttercream. 
So I guess, I mean, really, I replaced making buttercream with lemon curd, but the decorating was way easier and faster because I didn't have a thousand and one piping bags with 400 different colors, right? <laughs> That's always the unfun part for me, is making all the colors and having to do all of all of that. So simple, so easy, and it really didn't take that long at all to cook the crepes, cook the meringue, and cook the lemon curd, and assemble it all together. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, and I hope you give it a try. If you do, please send me a picture. I'd love to see how yours turned out, and let me know how you guys liked it, too. If you like what you saw here today, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified each time that a new video goes live, hit that bell. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I bring a new video each week on simple food, simple living, simply handmade. Take care, and I'll see you next time on Our Amiable Farmhouse. To their normally scheduled programming, whatever that is. <laughs> Away from the microphone. I told them, go upstairs. All right.